All right, 7.1. For this lesson, we're going to be looking at rewriting and evaluating nth roots. Okay, so chapter 7, talking about rational exponents. Okay, so our exponents are now going to become fractions. Okay, now the inverse operation of radicals is to write it as a rational exponent. Okay, so big thing, we need to be able to rewrite. Okay, this is one of the biggest skills you need to have moving forward in this chapter. Okay, so the first one we're going to look at, square root of 4. We can write this as a, well, as the radical, it's square root of 4. We can also write this with a rational exponent. Okay, so the big thing, you need to know your index. Okay, and to rewrite a radical, a sub, or square root of n, sorry, the nth root of a, what you're going to notice is that index will be on bottom, okay, and the exponent with whatever's inside will be in the numerator. Okay, so like this is 4 to the first, okay, which would be 2, okay, but if we were to write it as a rational exponent, that's saying 4, okay, exponent is 1, index is 2. So that's saying square root of 4 is the same as 4 to the 1 half power, which is also 2. Okay, so if I got one, the cube root of 125, so that's saying, what am I cubing to get 125, which would be 5 in this case. Okay, in order to write this as a rational exponent, you take your radicand, so 125, that becomes your base. Okay, the exponent is the numerator, the index is the denominator. So 125 to the 1 -third power is also the same as the cube root of 125. So if we got 80, the fourth root of 81, so it's saying, what am I taking to the fourth power to get 81? That would be 3. Okay, you can do your factor tree, break it down. It's going to be 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, that group of 4. Okay, that gets you 81. If we were to rewrite it in rational exponent form, again, the radicand, so 81, exponent is 1, so that's our numerator, and your index is the denominator. So 81 to the 1 fourth power, which is also 3. Okay, finally, fifth root of 32. So what would I be taking to the fifth power to get 32, which would be 2. Okay, to rewrite it again, take the radicand, okay, exponent, that's your numerator, index, that is your denominator, and it's the same thing. All right, so you will have to be able to go back and forth between the two forms, because typically one people like one form more than the other. Okay, and it's just easier to work sometimes in a specific form. So going between the two is going to be huge. Okay, so rewrite the expressions using rational exponent notation. So again, number one, you're going to take the radicand, so 7. Okay, exponent would be 1. If there's no exponent, it's 1 over the index. And if no index is shown, it is 2. So 7 to the 1 half power. All right, now, when it comes to ones like this, okay, this square here, this could also be inside of the radical. Those are equivalent statements there. So anytime it's on the outside of a parentheses or it's inside the radicand, again, you take that base, or the radicand, 2, to the 2 thirds power. Exponent, index. Okay, so here... We're going to have 12 to the 1 fourth power. Okay, again, radicand exponent over the index. Okay, so rewrite and evaluate. So we got 3 to the 1 half power. Okay, so if it's going to be easier to look at it in radical form, again, so square root, okay, again, the denominator is telling you the index, so 2 base to the first, and square root of 3, you're going to have to, you can't simplify that any further unless you were to give me a decimal, and at that point, it's going to be rounded, so you leave that as square root of 3. Okay, so 5 to the 2 thirds, okay, so we have an index of 3, and it's saying 5 squared, because again, the numerator is your exponent. And also, you could write this as the cube root of 5, squared. Okay, so 6 to the 1 fourth. Okay, so again, 
denominator is your index of 6. 6 to the first, you don't even need to write the 1. All right, and for those ones, you're just going to leave them at that point. If they were to simplify, then you would simplify them. All right, so evaluating them, okay, without a calculator. You will not have a calculator for this test. So we got the fourth row to 625. Anytime you're dealing with radicals, it's going to help if you break it into its factor tree. Okay, 625, that is one you're going to probably should recognize. Okay, it's a perfect square, and it's 25 times 25. Okay, with that, I should mention, okay, list of squares. Okay, so perfect squares, you should probably memorize to at least that 225, and then, you know, being able to recognize those other ones is going to be huge. As for perfect cubes, it's probably a good idea to memorize through 9 cubed for perfect fourths. It's probably good to memorize through 5 to the 4th. And then for perfect fifths, we're not going to really go beyond 4 to the 5th. So recognizing those numbers is going to be huge when evaluating. And then I can break it down into that 25, 25. Go a little further, 5, 5, 5, 5. And again, if we're doing a fourth root, we're looking for groups of 4. Okay, so that takes care of all the fives. So the fourth row is 625 is five. Now, when it comes to simplifying radicals, okay, fourth roots of any time the index is even and you have a negative inside the radical, so your radicand is negative, okay, that is a situation where you're going to get imaginaries. Okay, um, for our sake right now, we're just gonna say no real solution because okay, that would simplify to a, an imaginary because of the even index and the negative radicand. All right, so fourth root of 81. Okay, so we should be able to recognize that's 9 times 9. Okay, but I'm looking for groups of 4 again. So breaking it down further, 3, 3, we got a group of 4. So the fourth root of 81 is 3. Now, with this one, negative 81 to the 1 fourth. The way, way I'd like you guys to think about this, this is saying negative 1 times 81 to the 1 fourth. Okay, that negative is basically a multiplier. So a lot of people struggle with seeing that 81 to the 1 fourth. So I'm going to say negative 1 times the fourth root of 81, which we just did. Okay, so negative 1 times 3, which in this case will be negative 3. Okay, so it's very important if there's a parentheses or not. If it's no parentheses and you got that negative, it's just a multiplier at the end. Wait to do it at the end. So where we get an actual negative inside, okay, so now this is saying the value negative 27 to the two-thirds power. Okay, rewriting it, again, in radical form, that's where a lot of people see success. Okay, so in this case, cube root. Since it's in parentheses, negative 27 will be on the inside. And then for that numerator, the 2, I would wait to square it at the end. You could have it inside, but it's a lot easier when you do it at the end. Okay, so then we can simplify that cube root of negative 27. Okay, there is a negative inside the radical now, but the index is odd. Okay, so like when you break this down, you could say, no, let's not even break it down. That's... That's a perfect cube that you should recognize, okay? Cube root of 27, that is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27, okay? So since we have a negative, it is going to be negative 3. Next, again, break down 27. 9 times 3, 3 times 3, okay? So you can bring out that 3, and the cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. So negative 3 on the inside, negative 3 squared, which will give us... 9. Okay, now where this one differs, okay, there's no parentheses. Okay, so again, if that is not in parentheses, that's just like it's saying negative 1 times that 27 to the 2 thirds. So in this case, negative 1 times the cube root of 27, that being squared. So negative 1 times, again, we said the cube root of 27 was 3 squared. So negative 1 times 9, which will give us negative 9 in this case. Okay, we'll still see negative exponents. So if you remember negative exponents, you're going to take that term and bring it to the bottom. So we're going to have 1 over 9 to the 3 halves power. Okay, 
So and then again, it's typically easier to evaluate in radical form. So we got one over the square root of nine cubed, which will be one over three cubed, and three cubed is 27. So one over 27. All right, for the last one on this page then, okay, again, that negative, it's not inside of a square root. Okay, so what we're gonna have is we're gonna have negative one times that 32 to the negative three fifths. We have that negative exponent again. So negative one over that 32 to the three, 32 to the three fifths. So again, rewriting that as a radical. So that's saying the fifth root of 32 and then cubing it in the end. The fifth root of 32 is two. So negative one over two cubed. And then we got negative one over eight since two cubed is eight. So negative one eighth. If you kept it as negative one over eight, that would be fine as well. All right, so solving now, okay? So in order to solve, what we're gonna do is we're going to isolate the power. Okay, so it's our first step, isolate anything that's taken to a power. Take the appropriate root of both sides. Okay, so if it's a perfect, or if it's x squared, you take the square root. If it's x cubed, you take the cubed root. Fourth root, or fourth power, you take the fourth root. And then continue with the opposite operations if ne necessary. So, again, isolate the power. x cubed is my power. Okay, so we're good on that step. And again, to undo a cube, you're going to cube root. Okay, so then... We got x because the cube root of x cubed. So, well, real quick, let's do this. Cube root of x cubed. Okay, if we rewrote that as rational exponent form, okay, exponent over the index, that's just x to the first. That is how that works. Okay, so the cube root of 125 is 5. Now, well, let's, let's wait till we get to an even power. Okay, so. On this one, we need to isolate our power, which is x to the fifth. So we got to get rid of that 3. So dividing by 3, we got x to the fifth is equal to negative 1. Okay, so now that we've isolated our power, we're going to take the proper root. Okay, so x to the fifth, we're going to take the fifth root. Okay, so the fifth root of negative 1 will be negative 1. Okay. So now, this is where a lot of people struggle. Okay, when we get the parentheses, okay. This whole quantity, we're taking the quantity x plus four cubed. So x plus four is our power. So we have to get rid of the three first, okay. So remember PEMDAS, and you're, whenever you're solving, you're going in opposite, well here, PEMDAS, our order of operations. <laughs> whenever you're evaluating, you're taking it to the right. Whenever you're solving, you go left, so the first things you have to take care of is you're adding and subtracting, then you're multiplying and dividing, then your exponents, and then the parentheses. Okay, so we got to take care of the adding first, so then we'll have 2 times that x plus 4 cubed is equal to negative 16. Taking care of our division, dividing by 2, so we'll left, be left with x plus 4 cubed is equal to that negative 8. Now that we've isolated our power, we're gonna take the proper root. So since it's cubed, we will take the cubed root. Okay, index is odd, so we can take this and simplify this. And on the left side, we'll have x plus four, cube root of negative eight. Cube root of eight is two, so cube root of negative eight is positive two. And finally, isolating the, the x there, subtract four, subtract four, you get x is equal to negative two. Okay, so the last one there. We're gonna have to isolate the variable, so add that seven over. We're gonna have x to the fourth is equal to 10,000. We've isolated our variable, we're gonna take the proper root, so fourth root in this case. And we get x is equal to, okay, let's break this down. We'll go over to the side here. So 10,000. So we could say 10 times 1,000, 1,000, we could say 10 times
times 100, 10 times 10. And if we're taking a fourth root, we are looking for groups of four, which we have. Okay, so we have 10. But now this is where the, here's the kicker on this one. Since we took an even root, okay, we have to add the plus or minus because I could say 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. That'll give me that 10,000. And then I could even say negative 10 times negative 10 times negative 10 times negative 10. That will also be 10,000. So the thing is, if the index is even and you're in the process of solving, we cannot forget about the plus or minus. If the index is odd, like the past three, we do not have to worry about the plus or minus. Okay, so our answer for this one is plus or minus 10. All right, so that was 7.1. You have your homework, 7.1 book assignment. Okay, there's lots of problems, but it's very important that we can evaluate okay, and rewrite. So make sure you do your homework. Uh, we will have a practice day in class, so don't worry about if you, we're not just going to move on. So if we didn't understand this lesson, we'll get some practice in class. All right, have a good day.